In this week's Tableau Tip Tuesday, I'm going to show you how to build beautiful visualizations in Tableau with your Strava data. I built a template for you, which you can find on my Tableau public profile, which helps you build these five visualizations. First off, it looks at when and where you do your activities. I then create a small multiples view, which allows you to see all of them in a single view, which would look really cool printed as a poster. The third option is a calendar view, where you can pick the, the month and year of the activities and see each of them on their day of the week. Fourth, we have each of the individual routes based on year and month. And lastly, if you have the data available, we could show you your heart rate versus your speed. Now all of this is documented on my blog, which has step-by-step -step instructions with screenshots. But I know some of you prefer videos, so you can use this video if you prefer that method. And there's a few things you need to know before you get started. First off, you have to have a Strava account. Otherwise, how are you going to get your data out of Strava? You also need Alteryx Designer to prep the data, Tableau Desktop to visualize the data, and then a Chrome extension called Simple Mass Downloader, which will help us get all of the data out of our Strava accounts. So the first thing we need to do is we need to be logged into Strava. And in our little profile picture here, we want to go to Settings. At first, it'll be on your My Profile tab, but you want to choose My Account. It's going to list out some information about yourself. But down here is the most important part. You want to go to the bottom where it says Download or Delete Your Account. You want to click on Get Started. Now this page might seem a bit daunting because it seems like you might just go ahead and delete your account. But the only step we care about is Step 2, where we want to download our archive. So in Step 2, you want to click on the Request Your Archive button. That's going to then email you a link to a zip file which contains all of the information about all of your activities. Ignore step three, otherwise that'll delete your account. All we want is step two to request our archive. Once we've done that, we'll see a little zip file. I've gone ahead and unzipped it here. And we see a lot of information about each of our activities. So, lot, I'm sorry, lots of information about our account. Underneath of this activities folder, you see lots of files that are GPX files. Now those are the types of files that we're going to use However, there's other file types in here too, like TCX and .fit files. In order for this process to work, you need them all to be in the same file format. So what we want to do first is open up this activities.csv file. In this file, we can see we have all of the information about our activities. We have information about uh, the activity ID, when it happened, what the activity type was, etc. Now, if I scroll down to the bottom of this list, I'm going to see things like workout. So that might be, in this case, I did some stretching. And you, um, those activities don't have any location data associated with them. So those activities, if you download them, will come, will, they'll probably error out. But don't worry about that. Just ignore them. For demonstration purposes for, for this, uh, this video, I'm going to go ahead and filter out. I'm going to filter down to just the activities that are um, virtual rides. So I'm going to select everything. And for me, I'm going to choose uncheck virtual ride. And then I'm going to delete all of the rows. Now again, this is just for demonstration purposes. And then I'm going to go ahead and unfilter. Oops, yep, that's good. And here we have each of our activities. Now, you can see it looks like we have some sort of URL over here on the right-hand side, but some of them are TCX files, some are .fit, etc. We talked about that before. So what we want to do is we need to convert all of those to GPX files. So I'm going to insert a column to the left. Inside of here, I'm going to type in a formula. So I'm just going to, I've already written this out, and you can find it on my blog. And I'm going to paste that formula into cell 2. And it's going to build out a URL for me that has the download link that I need for every one of my files. So what I want to do now is I'm going to go ahead and copy that down by clicking on the little corner. And that's going to copy that link down for every single activity that I've done. Okay, so what's next? Um, so what we need to do is we need to download each of the activities. 
So inside of Chrome, there's if you just search for in the Chrome uh, store, you search for simple mass downloader, and then just go ahead and install that. It's going to show up on your menu bar here on the upper right hand side. And I'm going to click on that link that says simple mass downloader. And you'll see that it comes up blank. Now, what I've done over here in, in, uh, in Excel is I'm going to copy that whole row, or that, I'm sorry, that whole column of uh, URLs. And then in the simple mass downloader, I'm going to hit the little hamburger and choose uh, import URLs from clipboard. And that's now imported 138 links, and you can do it, you know, as many as you want. I can start downloading this uh, by hitting, uh, I, first I'm going to do select all, there we go, and then I'm going to just hit start selected. Now that's going to download all of the files at once, but let, let me go ahead and clear this list. Uh, so I'm going to clear, all, and I'm just going to show you how it works with just, with just one record. So, or maybe I'll choose two or three. So I'm going to copy these records instead of everything. And I'm going to I'm going to paste them in here from the clipboard, and I'm going to go ahead and run the selected files. Now, what the simple mass downloader is doing is it's going out to it's making a call out to Strava, and because I'm logged in, it's able to download those three files. And if I go into my downloads, I can see I have those three files here. Now I've gone ahead and run the, uh, I'm gonna go ahead and delete these, but I've gone ahead and, and pre-run all of those virtual rides and stuck them into a folder called GPX files. So these are each of those 138 activities that we looked at earlier. So that matches up with these 138 here. Okay, great. So I have all those files and now I need to start the data prep in Alteryx. So I need to go out to the Alteryx gallery and again, the link is on my blog, and I'll include the link in this video as well. Uh, and you need to log into the community. If you can't log into the community, I also have a link on my blog, which again, I will, I will include in, in this video to download it from Google Drive. Okay, so I'm going to download that uh, workflow, which I've already done. And I'm going to go ahead and open that in Alteryx. So I want to open my workflow. It's in my downloads, so I'm just going to go ahead and open that. And when I do, it's going to ask you, uh, are you sure you want to import a uh, packaged workflow? So I'm going to say yes. And then there's, got, there's a macro that needs to come along with it. So I'm just going to click on import in the next screen. And do you want to load the workflow? Yes, I do. So this is showing me everything in the workflow. And let me quickly take you through what this workflow is actually doing. Uh, so let me hide this. Uh, so it's doing some basic data prep here. It's going it's an app, so it's going to go out to uh, import all of the files from that directory. It's going to um, it's going to basically union them all together, do some cleanup, pull some data out of the uh, each each individual record. So in these data files, every one of them has an individual. Uh, uh, let me go here back to uh, here, and if I open up one of these files, you could see that each one of these has some information in it. What we want to pull out is things like power, heart rate, cadence, and the location information. Okay, so let's go back over to Alteryx. And that's what this is doing here. And then I convert all those to spatial points. I make them lines and I do some other things and I end up with three outputs. One is that small multiples view. One is every individual point, And then one is the, uh, each entire route as one point. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and run the app. And uh, by clicking on the little magic wand up there, if you didn't see it, I'm going to browse to the folder where these exist. So I need to go to my downloads. Uh, so I'm going to go to this PC and then downloads. And all I need to do is pick the directory. So mine's in GPX files, hit OK, and then click on finish. And it's going to go out and process those 138 files and it's running them all through this workflow. And let's see how long this takes. Now, what should happen here is each of these uh, files that are getting downloaded, they're all individual uh, Tableau data extracts, and they should be placed in that same folder that we were looking at a minute ago. So let's give it just a minute here to finish. Okay. Looks like it's progressing along okay. So again, what is uh, it's doing all of this geospatial work for us. Um, when we get each individual point downloaded from uh, from each of those individual activities, 
what we want to do is we want to have each of those activities in one file, I'm sorry, each of those individual locations in one file, but then we want to also play a game of connect the dots to draw each one of them um, as a line. Okay, so it should be done here in just a second. It doesn't generally take very long. It all depends on the amount of files you have. So when I run this with all of my data, it's several thousand activities. So it takes a bit while. Okay, so now you can see it's downloaded these three uh, files. I'm gonna go ahead and clear and hit okay, and then exit. All right, so I'm all done with Alteryx. So now what I need to do is I need to go to Tableau. Um, so if I go out to my Tableau public profile, this is the uh, this is the template that you can download. So you just hit the little download button, and it's going to open. It's going to download that TWBX file, which is in my downloads. Okay, and uh, you want to go ahead and launch that, which I've done already. And uh, I want to go to one of the sheets. It doesn't matter, or go to a new sheet. I'm going to expand out my activities here, and one by one. I want to go ahead and update these uh, look these file locations. So I'm going to right click on all points extract and I'm going to edit the data source. I want to edit the connection and I want to navigate to where I put that folder. So in downloads, GPX files, I want to choose the one that's all points. Hit OK and there we go. So I'm going to go to do, repeat that process for the all routes. So edit my data source. Choose the Edit Connection option, and this time I want to pick All Routes, okay, and then do the last thing for the normalized routes. Now the normalized routes are the really cool one that builds those small multiple maps. So again, I want to choose Edit Connection, Strava Small Multiples, and there we go. And because these templates were already built, uh, when I go back to each of these sheets, the data is going to refresh in the background with the new data. And uh, there we go. So you can see that uh, if I want to look at in the morning, uh, activities I did in the morning, and I only want to see those that uh, were in June. Okay. And then uh, what I could do now is I could just choose to zoom in on this particular uh, area down here. And I'm just going to keep zooming in until I can see it. And for those of you that use Zwift, this area is called Watopia. Uh, so those are all of the different locations that I have ridden in in, uh, in Watopia. And you can see on here that I have each individual point, and the darker the red, the more often I ride in that area. So if I clear my months filter, and I clear my days filter, you'll see it get filled out more and more. Okay. All right, there we go. So you can see where the highest concentrations of points are. When I go to my small multiples view, you can see this now updated with each of those activities. So if I go on here, I see, uh, let me see here, let me go to this sheet. And uh, if I look at my normalized routes, I can see there's 44 marks. I need to go ahead and right click on the data source and choose refresh. And okay, so it's, it's uh, not bringing in all of the activity. So let me edit the data source again. And I'm gonna go back to my downloads, GPX files, Strava small multiples, and go to my small multiples. And there we go. Okay, I just forgot to update the file. Okay, and uh, I already have a trellis in here, uh, so I can go ahead and show these headers. And what I like to do over in my small multiples is I'm going to shrink this down first. I'm going to shrink down both the rows and the columns. And I'm going to now I'm going to go ahead and hide the headers for both of them. Okay, so hide the header. And what I want to do is I'm going to go to the very edge, drag that over to the right hand side until the little dotted line just barely disappears and do the same thing at the bottom down till it just barely disappears and there we go we have our small multiple view as perfectly as uh, as we can see it so there's 138 activities in there okay so let's go to our calendar now and it looks like this one has uh, has already updated but let's double check it I'm going to go back to the sheet and yep, because we've already refreshed that data source that works just fine so I want to go to just uh, 2020 
and let's maybe go to the month of uh, June, let's say. And there you go. You can see which activities I did different virtual rides on. Okay, we can now go to this uh, routes sheet. And let me go ahead and go back here. And I'm just going to double check this, this activity here, or I'm sorry, this connection. Uh, if you're always unsure, you can always go back. Uh, just make sure that you pick the right location for the files. Okay, and now I go back to my routes. And you can see it zoomed all the way out because some of them are in New York, some of them are in the UK. So if I want to zoom in, uh, I can look maybe at London and see all of the different places that I rode virtually in London. Okay, and then uh, lastly, we want to go to the heart rate versus the speed. And because I have this data in, uh, in, my, uh, in my GPX files, I can see how my heart rate compares to the speed that I run. You see, you know, general blobs there of, of where you tend to uh, focus. Okay, so that is it. I hope you found this video useful. Um, again, all of this is documented on my blog and all the steps and everything that you need to do. Um, you want to make sure you edit those connections one by one and you can build your own beautiful visualizations with Strava and Tableau. Have a good day.